my god, dude. Okay, so this is hilarious <laughs> because I was gonna pick Golden Axe, and in my brain, I'm like, there's no way I'd get away oh, with saying Oh, there you go. All right, we're back with another squad cast. I feel like I haven't done this in a while, and luckily enough for all of us, the last time we did it, we had Tyler on, and Tyler's back. Hey, Tyler. What's up? What's up, Riff? It's it's good to have you back on as always, and it's funny, Tyler. Every time we like think of podcast ideas, it's it it's somehow turned into like uh, the podcast. If GameSack have a podcast, it's Nintendo <laughs> versus Sega. Yeah, it is. It's really. I'm like uh, kind of leaning towards the uh, Sega side, so I guess I'd be like the Joe, and you'd be the Dave. <laughs> but, you, but you know what's good though? This topic though, although that's true, this topic is almost even showing love to the other consoles in a weird way. Basically what we're talking about today is, let's say Sega Genesis games that are awesome or maybe not awesome, but would have been better in our opinion if they were on the Super Nintendo and then vice versa. Super Nintendo games that might have been better or could have benefited from being on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, so basically we're totally geeking out on this one. We're, we're like, geeking out. Uh, Tyler, I'm gonna start, and we didn't tell each other uh, our picks and what, why and whatnot to just kind of keep it interesting. Uh, my first one, Tyler, would be a game that, that was a Super Nintendo game that I would have loved to seen on the Sega Genesis. And that is a game that came out in 1991 on October 21st oh, by boy. Capcom. And going with the October theme, I'm talking Demon's Crest. Oh, man. I've been playing Demon's Crest with my cousin on the Super Nintendo uh, Switch the, the, online yep. service. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that game, if you don't know, it's a side-scrolling platformer. You play as Firebrand. It is a super dark, super dreary, super, uh, that, that, that sound of like those pianos that just have like that, that vampire-ish sound, which I think is great. And I really love the video game. Don't get me wrong. I love the video game totally. But I've always thought that the Sega Genesis, as we've said a million times, has that edge, has that, has mm -hmm. that. It can take a game that might be a dark game or a deep game or an edgy game and kind of set it off a little bit is even more deep, more dark, more edgy. And Demon's Crest, I think, would have benefited tremendously from this because although Super Nintendo gave it like that orchestrated piano sound, I would yeah. have loved to heard that just that grit that the right. Sega Genesis brings. That kind of raw, like almost like rock sound that you can get with like Genesis music would be really cool. Uh, I think, you know, actually, you know, if you look to other kind of horror themed Sega Genesis games like Castlevania Bloodlines or Splatterhouse oh, yeah. 3, Oof, you can totally one. see Demon's Crest like conjure up that kind of vibe, that darkness. Man, like Splatterhouse 3, there's so much blood and gore and, and spooky, like almost morbid stuff going on in that. And that would have been perfect for Demon's Crest because That's it's what like, I was going to say is we, I mean, the game's called Demon's Crest. I think at that yeah. point it's already established that it's okay to have those extra dark things like the extra blood and the extra gore, you know? Yeah. It, it, as it stands, Demon's Crest is one of these games where it's like, it's trying to push that envelope, but it's like, it's got this cap. It can't yeah. really like go over the edge and yep. so absolutely i totally agree with you like that would have been awesome on the sega genesis now yeah. that i think about it yeah that's Ty so cool tyler it's your turn then i'll throw me one okay all right so i've i was thinking about this last night because we were you know we were deciding to do this topic and uh kirby i always felt like kirby never got the game it ever that it wanted that it needed okay tell me more i'm interested wanted. i'm interested so Kirby obviously is this amazing franchise that Nintendo has and they've done so many games, but you look at the character of Kirby and he's this incredible, you know, cutesy, almost anime cartoon style design. And I feel like that would have been perfect on the Sega Saturn in like a 2D hand-drawn animated, beautiful, sprawling game like big adventure on the Sega Saturn. Well, that's um, interesting you say. I didn't even think about that when you were, I thought you were gonna say Sega Genesis and I'm like, I don't know. And then as soon as you yeah. said Saturn, I'm like, okay, I could see that. Yeah, that's the thing. Cause like it, no, it wouldn't have really worked on the Genesis, but on the Sega Saturn, I'm gonna point to games, specifically games like Astal. Okay, and, yeah, yeah. And um, even Rayman, of course, which was also on the Sony PlayStation. But if you think in terms of what the Sega Saturn was able to do with 2D games and these like beautiful sprite 
but hand drawn sprite um, animated games. They, they were they were fantastic. And if you take the Kirby world, and if you put that kind of love and care into like the 2D version as we know it, I mean, as it was, Nintendo was trying to to really push it with like Kirby three on Super Nintendo. Oh, for sure, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But they, but they couldn't really do it. You know, that was stylized and that was really good. But I can only imagine, and I've thought about this for years, what would it have been like on the Sega Saturn with these, like, you know, almost like Cuphead, you know? That, like, that's so interesting because I personally, it, like, it's one of those Nintendo staples, so my brain almost couldn't even wrap itself around thinking one of those being on a different brand. You know, yeah. like I can picture Sonic on Nintendo because it's been done, but I can't really picture like Kirby on, you know, a Sega console until you explained it. Now it makes more sense. And I think that'd be like, I think that Rayman comparison was a really cool mm. comparison. Yeah, no, just like hand-drawn animation. We've never really seen, we've seen cut scenes where, where Kirby is maybe hand-drawn, I think a yeah. few times, or of course there was the cartoon that came out, the, the oh, animated yeah. Yeah, cartoon. There's a full cartoon. Yeah, and so like, I think if, I always felt like the character and his world lent itself to that style. And instead they kind of went down the road with Nintendo 64, um, the shattered stars. I can't remember what it was called on yeah, Kirby 64. Oh, there you go. Crystal shards. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, Kirby 64. Like it became, you know, a 3d 2.5d polygonal driven game. Yeah. And it was like, Oh, that's cool and everything. But man, what if it looked like, a stall or Rayman. That's really cool. Um, I, I really like that. And I really like, uh, and Kirby is very, you know, there's a lot of cool art with it, like Kirby's epic yarn and stuff. So I always like when Kirby has like those different types of art styles. I feel like they can play with it and justify it. All right, what do you got for me? I'm got jumping me? into the only one I did mention to you when we were topping, talking about this topic. And that is, I would think, and this is a Genesis to Nintendo. And this would be the, the Sega Genesis version of Strider over to the Super oh. Nintendo. Um, I say that because when I played Strider on the NES, the original, I know, not the original, but the Strider on the NES, I know not a lot of people love that game, but something that I really love, and I think the NES version of Strider is underrated for, is the soundtrack. It, it has a yes. beautiful, Gorge, I dare I say gorgeous soundtrack. I know NES Complex has a couple of those videos that start out with that theme and it's, it has uh, such a yeah. feeling of like, almost like epicness. And as much as I love the Genesis version of the game, the only thing I don't necessarily love is the sound on that game and the music. I like the music and I like the Sega edge on it, but I compare it automatically to like more of like the epic sound that it was in the Nintendo. So I kind of imagine those songs with that yeah. big, sprawling, epic, open Nintendo sound. I guess that's the way I want to say it. That game, the sound feels sharp, uh, but I, mm -hmm. I kind of would love to hear it have that just openly wonderful, like, present sound, even compared to the NES version. Yeah, and I don't know if you, I totally agree. I think it would have actually really excelled on the Super Nintendo. Plus, like Capcom back then, I know that the port for the Sega Genesis was done in house by Sega. Got it. Um, and, but Capcom, you know, made the game. And I think they actually understood the Super Nintendo hardware better. Yeah, than yeah, yeah. The Sega you're Genesis right. You're hardware. right. I really, I really think that's, that's true. And I think Strider like a port of the arcade strider would have been better on the super nintendo for that reason I, I, and, you know as it is the the genesis version is pretty choppy yeah it is um it, it's got lots of sprite glitches and it does and choppiness, and, and I, again i still, still like it oh it's still an epic game uh and it's still fantastic and a, and a classic i never forget it was one of the first eight meg cartridges like they actually put that on the box because it was a selling point oh that's awesome it said, it, it said a eight meg cartridge i think that's our next so, i think that's our next video tyler is ranking all capcom games on the super nintendo oh wow that, that, that would be a be video <laughs> that would be a that list would be, that would be awesome <laughs> we need to do yeah. that all right tyler you're uh, up you're up sir uh, oh, actually, one more thing I wanted to point out was Run Saber. I don't know if you've ever played that, but that's on Super Nintendo. I've watched and, plenty and, of gameplay of Run Saber. Okay, yeah, and that's a that's that was like a Strider, and it it was a good game. Very, it's not a very, very good, good game it, from what I see. Really cool with all the Mode Seven effects yeah. they use Oof, in that game. And so yeah, yeah, if you can imagine Strider, but like with that, yeah. you know, it's kind of gameplay in that style, yep. it totally could have happened. So I was trying to think of a Sega game that actually would be better on Nintendo okay. because the, the first one I had was the Kirby yeah, yeah. and it was Nintendo. So so the first thing I thought of was Alex Kidd. 
Oh, like, yeah, I know that's great. There, like, there's got to be a lot of Sega fanboys out there who are going to hate me for that. For sure. I'm sorry for getting... I'm, I'm throwing myself under the bus here. Alex Kidd, you know, come on. He's a, he's a, a, a preliminal... Is that the word? Preliminal? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a word. <laughs> Alex Kidd, he is like, you know, a Sega mascot. And here I am saying, oh, he should be on the Super Nintendo. But here's why. Alex Kidd... I, you know, if you look back at his games on the Sega consoles, I think it was Genesis and Master, Master, System. Master System, of course. Yeah, they, he never quite fit. He never really quite fit in with the Sega crowd, I feel. You're right. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I could reimagine Alex Kidd as like a, you know, a really beautiful with tons of colors and, and great... You know that like Super Nintendo kind of sound. Yeah. I don't know. I, I could see it almost like the Legend of the Mystical Ninja. You know, yeah, Goemon. Goemon yeah. L l like kind of like that style game because even in the Alex Kid series, you had a couple of games there where he would talk to you know the people in his house on Alex Kid in High Tech World. He's like there's some RPG elements yeah. there, and so I feel like. Um, a Goemon style, you know, Legend of the Mystical Ninja, but done as an Alex Kid game. I totally um, agree with you on that. I could totally see it. Like his character is is quirky enough, and the other characters in the series that they came up with, especially for like Alex Kid Miracle World, with like his his brother, who's the Prince of Redaxian, yeah. and you got the you got like these this like village almost like. Uh, you know, Japanese uh, feudal Japan style like stuff going on in the story. Line. It's funny because that, that's and one of the ones where I feel like almost when you said it, I didn't even feel like I needed to hear an explanation. I was like, oh, that just makes sense. Hit me Here's my it. next one. On the Super Nintendo, we had Ninja Gaiden Trilogy. And let me explain. Playing the Nintendo version, the NES version of Ninja Gaiden was an amazing game, is an amazing game. But it almost felt like it was some sort of Sega game because it was able to give me that, like like I say, those harsh, edgy feelings with the way you moved and the way you hit and everything was rigid. And it just, it felt like a Sega game. Now, I'm not saying that one needed to be a Sega game, but I'm saying when we got the Ninja Gaiden trilogy, I feel like that one wasn't as sharp and edgy and hit hard and ninja feeling as I would have liked. I feel like it got the... The, maybe the Super Nintendo treatment, if you want to call it, got a little softer. Right. Everything felt a little more round. Um, even the way it yeah. felt just felt a tiny bit more floaty. And I feel like a Ninja Gaiden trilogy done on the Sega Genesis would have given uh. it given it it would have given it that feel that I felt when I played it on the Nintendo that I that I really feel like I was like lacking when I played the Super Nintendo version. Even though I liked it and it was good, I yeah. feel like it would have been better served on a Sega Genesis. I think you're right. I can agree with that. I get behind that because, like, the Super Nintendo Ninja Gaiden trilogy, it did. It felt a little slower. Yeah, it did. It felt a, a little, little floaty. Like, like a, a little, yeah, exactly. And, and if you know, think about the Sega Genesis and its hardware and you know, blast processing yep. and all that. You could have, you could have actually upped the speed of this of the regular Nintendo NES. Versions. I agree. Like even more so, throw more enemies at you, throw more kind of craziness happening uh, on the screen, and I, I, yeah, I totally could see that. Ninja Gaiden really lends itself to like the Sega Genesis. Well, you know, Sega Genesis was home to one of the greatest Shinobi franchise, sorry, ninja franchises of all time, Shinobi. Oh yeah, and and so like you can, yeah, I mean, you know, they showed with Shinobi how great Oof, Ninja Shinobi games are fantastic and, on the Genesis. Oh yeah. So. Just awesome. So yeah, I totally can get behind. You're that. up, sir. People are. I have three more actually. I don't know if we can get to uh -oh. all of them with the time allotted, but we'll try. To, I'll try to go through this one quickly because I actually want to go through it quickly because I'm going to get a ton uh -oh, of. Oh, go quick this. then, hurry. A ton Save yourself. Okay, Earthbound oh. on the Sega Genesis. Oh, here comes the. Okay, here's like. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, don't throw any tomatoes yeah. at me, anybody, please. No, no. Let me, let me, let me, uh, let me. Explain. Uh, so behind me, I have uh, Fantasy Star 4 playing in the background here. And if you can imagine Earthbound as a, a little bit more gritty, a little bit more realistic in its drawings and in its character designs. Gygas? Yeah. And, you know, here's hmm. the thing. Er Earthbound threw a lot of mature themes at you, especially You're towards right. the end of the game and the, like, the nightmare scenarios and, and, and just yeah. the, the craziness that's going on near the end of the game. And I really feel like, I don't know, 
on a Sega system, it could have been it could have been better per se because I don't know, like for me, Earthbound's great, of course, and I loved it, but it always kind of just felt too simple and too um, cartoony. Hey, and your opinion is your opinion. It is regardless. my. Yeah, that's true. There, that's is, true. there is no wrong your opinion you know yeah but like i would love to just take all the mechanics of earthbound maybe give the sprites some more detail maybe give the the backgrounds and the you know the animations a little bit more to do and and i I agree with you and and i'm not saying that i necessarily know if i think it'd be better on the genesis but i could really see it hitting some really good points on the sega genesis i think you're right with with the the dark humor and a lot of those and I can't imagine the the Gygus music, you know, with yeah. with that Sega feel. I think would as much as the Super Nintendo feel of it's so weird. I feel like we could have got like scared in a different way with those Sega Genesis sounds and feels. So I like that. <laughs> Maybe I'm just I'm just thinking in a very cynical, uh, dark way or something. But I'm like, yeah, throw a bunch of cutesy stuff at you, and then with the Sega Genesis and its edge and the, and the, how edgy a lot of those games got, really scare the pants off of people. Uh, yeah, you, 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 uh, you might know, not be wrong. By the somebody end of do it. Okay. Yeah, somebody make a hack. All right, Tyler. <laughs> for my for my last ones, maybe you can give us your top two at the end as like a thing and do them kind of quick. Sure. You can blast process your way through them. Uh, <laughs> no, my last nice one would be a, a Genesis game that I really like, but I think it would be have some really cool things on the on the Super Nintendo. Um, and that's Gargoyles on the Sega Genesis. It's a great game. I love the game. It's yeah. almost like, you know, a Firebrand type game. Yeah. Um, it's a side sc- side scrolling platformer. But something that I loved in the Super Nintendo that a lot of people, I don't know if they necessarily did or didn't, uh, games like Pilot Wings and stuff like that. I love like the Mode 7 on the Super Nintendo. And I think Gargoyles, we could have gotten some cool levels of like those flying slash gliding levels uh, with the Gargoyles. We didn't get that in the Sega Genesis game. I think it would have really been cool to have some of those levels to kind of live out that flying slash gliding experience as the Gargoyles. Because I I love that show as a kid. I love the Genesis game as a kid. But I never really got to get that kind of feeling that I wanted to as a kid being like, oh, man, I'm a gargoyle. I should be like able to like fly and glide. And I was like, right. I didn't really get any of that big experience. But I think a Super Nintendo Mode 7 experience for that would have been a really cool way for me to enjoy that as a kid. I can yeah. totally see that. And actually, Demon's Crest, which was the other gargoyle game yep. you mentioned. It's funny. You yeah, what, gar- yeah, it's kind of like gargoyle it. games. Yeah, I mean, yeah, those Mode 7 effects in Demon's Crest, uh, if you can imagine that, but with the Gargoyles characters from the from the Disney cartoon. And and the Sega Genesis Gargoyles game is good. I, I do feel like it it kind of, I don't know, it, it, it could have been, like you said, it could have been Yeah, they, they definitely could have done um, more it, with it, it, for sure. It's funny because I say Demon's Crest, I want it to be darker on the Genesis, but almost the Genesis version it's an animated show, so I don't know if, enough, know if I necessarily wanted it darker. I just wanted to explore more right. things as a gargoyle. Yeah, isn't that funny? Because like a game like Demon's Crest, of course, we're talking about like we want blood and gore to be more because it feels like it's more a part of that. Yep. And then, but but yeah, for gargoyles, the Disney cartoon, we're actually saying, wait, no, put that on the Super Nintendo because that yeah. actually it's that it's uh, my it's my Disney animated cartoon. It's not necessarily yeah. as dark as I I don't need it super dark I well, want to explore yeah I agree and you think about it too like that was a Disney franchise and and on and Capcom who did all those great Super Nintendo and NES Disney cartoon games you know like Goof Troop and Bonkers and uh yep. you know uh, obviously all the side NES note ones. side note me and Tyler both love Bonkers Man. totally nuts totally nuts so Wonder Boy the Sega game the franchise you know I always felt like Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap is fantastic. Obviously, it got remade. It's on the Switch on PlayStation. Beautiful game. It's a beautiful game. And it was great on the Master System where it originally came out. But was. What Monster Wonder Boy and Monster World on the Sega Genesis, I always felt like that game was kind of clunky and kind of just... It just really didn't really showcase what the Sega Genesis could do. True. And at that point... During that 16-bit era, we got an Adventure Island game, Super Adventure Island 2, which was much more in the same vein as the Wonder Boy yeah, series, yeah. which obviously there's a whole other topic and story there where of Adventure course. Island is Wonder Boy and Wonder Boy is Adventure Island, depending on the developer. You know, it's it's this weird, we could go into that on another day. Tyler, but, you, know, you know what I love? 
I love that like you're going for like the big dogs. You're like Kirby, Alex Kidd, <laughs> Wonder Boy, <laughs> Mario. I'm like, oh hey. my gosh, this guy. No holds barred. No, hold- I like it though. You no know, you speak barred. your mind. Hey, that's, that's the only thing I can speak sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so really like uh, you. I think that that game it should it would have been so good on the Super Nintendo. Really, yeah. like Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. I feel like he just kind of fit. Again, it's all about like fitting in. Yeah, like, funny like, enough, like, like you said, I, I like the Sega Master System version of it better than I did the later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like by the time the 16-bit era came around, it's like mm, I feel like this should be on Super Nintendo. Yeah. Okay, so for the other one, this, this Here we one go. final I swear, choice. Dun, 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 dun. I swear, man. I'm gonna hate, I'm gonna get so much flack from oh my uh, gosh let's, let's from hear Sega it. fanboys I, I, and stuff. But you're okay, a Sega yeah. fanboy, so I you're am. allowed so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel I feel like I have that too. Thank yeah. you, man. I, <laughs> um, I love Sega enough. I can I can hate on them. Right? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, oh boy. All right. I shouldn't. No, this isn't hate though. This is just saying what if. That's the whole idea too. That's actually why I'm wearing the Stranger Things shirt because this whole I thought like um, this is like a what if comic book like type of thing. I love like, how, I love like, how much backtracking you're doing right now so that you don't <laughs> get killed in the comments. Right, exactly. Okay, so <laughs> Golden Axe. Oh my god, dude. Okay, so this is hilarious <laughs> because I was gonna pick Golden Axe, and in my brain I'm like, there's no way I'd get away oh, with saying that. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, hey, so maybe you can empathize. So, Golden Axe, it's, of course, a, it's, it's a classic it's a Sega staple. Genesis. It's a staple. It is a staple, it's a staple Sega staple. game. It's right up there with Streets of Rage and Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. And, you know, but it's like, wait, think about it for a second, though. As great as it was on okay. Sega Genesis. It could have been so, even that much better on the Super Nintendo, given what type of game it was. Because... Okay. I look at games like, obviously, Golden Axe is a beautiful, awesome arcade beat em up in the medieval era. You know, yeah. dragons and knights, you, sorcery, yep. swords and sorcery. Think of games like Knights of the Round. Yeah, I was just or, about to say that. It's a great Capcom game. Again, Capcom another and Super great, Nintendo. It keeps, yeah. coming, it keeps coming back to Capcom here. Uh, and, you know, King of Dragons, another great Capcom. Yeah, King of Dragons is uh, awesome. Uh, arcade port. And,. You know, when I look at those games, I see what they were able to do with that medieval setting. I'm just like, whoa, like, wait, Golden Axe. Golden Axe is great, but wait, these are these are actually, I mean, I wouldn't say that, I don't know, maybe I would say that Knights of the Round is better than Golden Axe. I, I, I know I, what you're saying. I, and again, it I goes back. Knights of the Round. It, it goes back to the, the typical that we say a million times. Sega, Golden Axe was like an edgy, harsh, felt, game yes. and Knights of the Round and those feel like a little bit more epic story of dragons and a little bit more yeah, right and you're saying you it could really lend to that like some sort of like epicness right. of the dwarf and the warrior and the wizard you know everyone kind of on a quest I'm also thinking of the pacing of those games for some reason Sega with the Golden Axe games, they're a little slow, and that's really strange coming from Sega yeah. Genesis because that usually was faster with their games yeah, and they, stuff. they normally push uh, it. The, yeah, and for some reason, like I look at a game like Knights of the Round, and it's like super fast paced. It's just action packed. Yep. Yeah, I really think. And here's another thing. Here's another game that people don't even look to or think of: the game Legend on Super Nintendo. I don't know. It's how been a well long you know this time game. since I even heard that game. It's a really hard to find rare Super Nintendo game, and I wouldn't even call it a great game, but it's the graphics in that game. And what they were able to do with the kind of like axe battler, Conan the Barbarian warriors, you know, it's a beat 'em up. It's like it's like Golden Axe, yeah. but the sprites are actually bigger, like Oof. so much bigger than what they did on the on the Genesis with uh, Golden Axe. And it's almost like Legend is kind of like it was trying to be the Super Nintendo Golden Axe. Oh, it didn't, okay. It, it it didn't quite you know get there with the gameplay. It's a it's kind of repetitive and slow. Yeah. Um, but visually graphics wise it's like ooh, i see what you're going for there and if we had golden axe looking like that that would be pretty awesome so this is why i kind of feel like i feel like golden axe in all that it was it actually might have 
been better on Super Nintendo. Well, you know what, Tyler? It's it's all right because uh, all right, everybody say thank you to Tyler. It was his last time doing this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so long, everybody. Uh, it was it was a good run. No, uh, I'm getting tons it, of. <laughs> in, in reality, opinions are opinions, and we want to know your guys' opinions. There's some obviously, you know, there's a million. I'm just waiting for someone in the comments to justify, you know, Sonic on the Nintendo. It would have been better, or Mario on the Sega. I know, Some, right? Someone's gonna say it, so let's hear it. We want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, again, Tyler. Thanks for being on, dude. No, thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. And make sure you guys are checking out My Retro Life whenever they come up here because season two is here. We got new videos and they're they're the greatest new old videos you've ever seen. <laughs> they're, they're the best. So, all right, Tyler, that's Appreciate it. Thank it, you again, dude. All right. See you later. All right, dude. Adios. Mm -hmm.